Welcome back, everybody, to the Adventures of Santa across the Crusader Kings 2 multiverse. Yesterday, we landed in Atmore and began building up a bit of a beach here. We've actually built quite a nice little realm here. We got ourselves some gold and obviously were able to, uh, to, to smash the Frozen Horde there a little bit. But today, my friends, our story does not continue in the realm of Tamriel. Today, we fly to a new realm. We move on to our next, or our first, I should say, cross-dimensional journey here. We are going to the realm of Westeros, where Santa's true enemy awaits him. Spoth Bog Top, Top Bog Spoth himself, King of Ashai, the Shadow King. You have Sleipnir saddled, ready for the journey across the realm's borders. Weaving some po powerful Santa Christmas magic, you open a portal and climb aboard your trusty Christmas steed. Fly Sleipnir to the realm of Top Bog Spoth. There we are. Sleipnir and Santa erupt from the cross-dimensional portal and arrive in the northern province of Westeros. Directly in front of the duo is a dower-dressed lord with a small group of retainers. Busted? Asks the gruff lord. Excuse me? You reply. Ah, uh, busted. Replies the man, his spirits lifting somewhat. He begins to trudge over towards you and firmly shakes your hand. Busted, busted, busted. Busted, busted? Bastard, he explains happily. Before you can come to terms with what just happened, the man hands you a scroll that reads, Title of Lordship, the Isle of Skagos. Th 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 thank you, kind sir. Santa is made Lord of Skagos at the behest of Lord Paramount. Oh my god, it was it was, it was was him. The man himself. Born Sheen, Lord Paramount Eddard Stark. Boom. And we, of course, become close friends. That's as easy as it is here. You know, they're, they're very friendly people, these, uh, the, these northerners. We have now been made the Lord of Skagos, which is um, kind of the king of ship mountain, really, given that there's nothing in Skagos, to Wasteland. However, Santa didn't want to land too far over here because he's heard of some, you know, potential disturbances, more ice zombies. Santa said enough ice zombies for one episode. We don't want to deal, we don't want to go for one episode dealing with ice zombies to another episode dealing with more ice zombies. So we're on the island of Skagos, which is at least somewhat protected from the ice zombies. Of course, there is a reason, a true reason Santa is here. No, it is not to fight more ice zombies, but it is in fact to deal with his mortal enemy, the destroyer of Santa's own fair earth. Top Bog Spoth himself. If we look over to the eastern lands, far beyond the Bone Mountains, far beyond the Free Cities, we have the Jade Sea, or as it is known these days, the Shadow Sea. This is just after lovely Fandango? What? <laughs> um, Fandango Emperor Top Bog the First, of course, referred to as the Hand of Chaos, as the one who opened the labyrinths under Lang, the worshippers of the old gods themselves. We need to cork it up. We need to cork it up. We need to we need to d debase his power somewhat, but there are also other means to deal with Spothbog. We can't just go over there and seal the labyrinth. He is way too powerful. How many troops did he have? Uh, I didn't even bother checking. 73,000 troops versus Santa's mighty 1,077 men. It's going to obviously take a long time before we can build ourselves up to uh, to deal with Spothbog. We're going to need some alliances. We're going to need to carve out a realm of our own, maybe independent of Westeros, of course. Spothbog, however, there, there, are, there are a few other steps that we would need to take him out. As with Rakungtunch, Rakungtunch and the Dwemer have the power of the Dragon Breaks and, of course, have control over time. So if they were to die, they would be reborn anew. They would be able to just reverse the clock and come back fresh. Topbog, however, has the power of the Dark Gods on his side. So if he dies, if he is assassinated, if he is executed, dies in Battlefield Duel, whatever, he will be rebuilt by the Dark Gods themselves. They will just send another Topbog out of the Labyrinths of Lang. So he, like the Dwemer, is protected from outside interference. It is down to Santa to truly banish Spothbog Top because he's the only one who knows how to deal with Spothbog. So we have to. I mean, A, be higher rank than Lord. I mean, that's kind of just self-explanatory, really. Otherwise, we get smashed. We need a thousand piety because, if, of course, only a pious man can banish the dark old gods. And I think Santa, questionable if you saw last series, uh, is, is a very pious man. Santa has closed the labyrinths of Lang. Of course, we do need to cut him off from his dark gods who have given the power in the first place. Only then can he truly be banished, finally. And, oh, there's more to it. We need control of the Dwemer weapon. The nondescript Dwemer super weapon. Something that's only possible of contending with the gods themselves and potentially even top box buff. That's right. We need to bring from one realm over into the other a weapon powerful enough built by the Dwemer to take out top box buff. It's going to be complicated. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a lot of cross 
dimensions, cross mod to peel the curtain back a little bit planning. We're going to have to work out the sort of timings on our wars. You know, if we're preparing to move against Topo, we need to make sure that we have that weapon prepared. We need to be able to defeat Rakungtunj as well. We can't just go all in full board on one mod without going full, all in full board on the other. Otherwise, the timing is just not going to ma match up and we'll miss our window there. So we need to be very, very careful. We need to plan things out. More importantly, we need to think what will benefit us in the other mod that we can bring sort of immediately. What do we have easy access to, for example, in the Game of Thrones world that we can take over to the Outer Kings and vice versa? Well, of course, from the Outer Kings, we've, we've bought some pretty good traits. However, we don't have no artifacts. We have no treasury right now. We could go back to the, the realm of the Outer, the Outer Kings with a dragon. That would help out a lot. Although, given what they think of dragon, you know, the whole blades and things, it probably wouldn't work out too well, huh? So, hey... Let's just see how we go. This is still very early days. We've, of course, got Slate Near as well, because he came with us. We've taken our treasury, our prestige, our piety, uh, and, of course, our gold, our personal gold there from uh, from Atmora over to Skagos now. And we'll see. The question is, do we want to invest in Atmora? Do we want to invest in Skagos? Because, of course, in the uh, once we're done here, that gold that we've invested here is not going to affect us in the other realms. We have to be very careful about how we manage our finances, too. So... We could do some really crazy shit, like be a Merchant Republic in the Game of Thrones mod, and then be like pure feudal warlord in, uh, in the other mod, and then, you know, use one to finance the other. It, that's too much. This is too much. Oh, God, my head. This is too much to think about early on. Let's not worry about it. Let's just focus on the facts here. So we are, we are, we are old gods, bear in mind that we are in Westeros. Senator doesn't really care for religion. He's just sort of going with the flow of things. So animism in one, obviously the, uh, the, the old gods in the other. We're not going to go for Nickelodeon or anything because people don't know who he is. He can't just turn up and start proclaiming himself a god unlike Santa in the real world. He doesn't have many worshippers here. Definitely wouldn't have any friends if he started to, uh, to preach this sort of apostasy. Right. We need to, just like in the other world, focus on the basics. Let's put down a Santa, uh, a clan clause in the in the in the realm of Westeros. Of course, we want to make sure that we don't get immediately game over here. So I am looking for a waifu. Um, what are we gonna? Okay, I guess we'll just go for like lustful. I think the problem is right now, given that we're up in Skagos, that I mean, a, a diplomatic range is very limited, given that we're right near the top of the map, and all these people over here obviously aren't going to be interested in us. Um, Maybe we can go for, like, a highborn marriage. Bear in mind, we are a duke. So maybe we could have a word with, like, uh... Hey, Eddard, you got you got daughters? I mean, Sansa is only six, and Sansa is, uh... Factors of 100 her her senior there, so I'm, I'm not gonna be... I feel like that's a little inappropriate. We could always, like, present Debbie Tom, we go out and hunt, try and get a wife that way. Just anybody, really, right now, to sort of kick things off. Let's go gender women, uh, married, preferably not. And then Diplorange, yes. Uh, we'll see if any would join our court. So you got Melissa, who is apparently some sort of mage. Um, let's go join court Any. My god, I can't believe how well. It hasn't crashed yet. That's a load off my mind. Um, join court Any, and that's sort of by opinion, I guess, because they're the ones that are more likely to join us. Oh, look at her. She's giant and lustful. Excellent. Actually, ha ha that could be very good. Okay. Uh, send her a gift. Bring her on board then. She's over in. Uh, is that the Umbers? Wolfswood. Sorry, my bad. Uh, right, let's invite her over to our court then. Now, can we take multiple wives or anything like that? We are Skagossi, but we are basically still, um, we are still first man. You know, we're still just some of the Westerosi culture and customs. So it's not like we can have crazy polygamy, even though we are a little bit closer to tribal than your standard Westerosi uh, high house and culture there. All right. Jillian, our our new wife, the, the tall, lustful lady. Um, what's that? What is that? Master diplomat? Okay, very nice. Uh, let's arrange marriage then. Let's, let's get this done and get her done and get a child on board so that if we do out and get go out and get murdered immediately, house calls isn't just going to end there. Also, we need an ambition. Um, so we can't... There's no option to groom an heir this time, so we can't get that fertility bonus. We could. Hang on. Valyrian Steel. Take that back to... I feel like that'd be less impressive over in, of course, the Elder King's world. So the Elder King's obviously has a lot of uh, a lot of very powerful artifacts, but the, the Game of Thrones world has the... I don't know how I would describe it, really. A bit more of the mysticism, you know? Despite the fact that, of course, Elder Scrolls has, has a whole school of mysticism. The the, the dark magic in the, uh, in the in the Game of Thrones world seems a little more, you know, a little more potent in a way. So, you know, obviously bringing a fucking dragon back with us would be awesome here. Right, okay. Santa of Skagos, we're going to obtain Valyrian Steel Sword. I think that'd be an awesome start. Sleep near with a, with, sorry, sleep near with a Valyrian Steel Sword. That seems like a pretty good start. We'll take it back with us over to Atmora. That way we could, uh, oh, good. Sorry. Ricard of... What's he doing? Is he vassalizing her? Clement Skagos? Why have you got Clement Skagos, you weird man? We're gonna give him to... What? That's not right. Unless the... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not it, Chief. Um... Hmm. 
Not a fan of that one. I mean, we could, we might be able to beat him. 2,900, 1,000. I mean, he's got to take a straight cross in to get to us. I think we can probably beat him. You know what? That's a great start. He, he obviously disagrees with Lord Eddard Stark's decision to land this random man who's just appeared at court. He's going he's gonna to take matters into his own hands. I suppose that's the High Lord of this area. Right? He might have some sort of uh, just sort of ancestral claim or something like that. Right, let's get you on board. Mer I should have raised those when he was movement locks over here. He can't get to us right now. Um... Wait for him to move. Then we'll send these mercenaries across the ocean. We'll take the fight to him. So he's only got 3,084. Oh, God, what is this? I've been reading the legends. It claims that death is not something a true believer should be afraid of. Gods forgive me, for I have sinned. Um, again, tress, stressed. We can lose proud or we can lose cruel. Okay. Um, was there in the afterlife, though? Chance was gaining stressed. Why would we not want to do that? We. Oh, no, no, no. That's guaranteed that we lose proud and cruel. But we. there's 50% chance of gaining stress. That's fantastic. There we go. Um, we actually lost both. Oh, well, I mean, of course we lost both. And we got. We did get stressed. Okay, that's a bit of a shame. Right, okay. Santa on the Vanguard. That's a bit worrying. But you know what? We don't really have a choice right now. Otherwise, we're going to lose everything. Shit, we've got to set everything up fresh, haven't we? This is going to be too much for my little brain to take in for, a, for at least the first few episodes, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> knock off discount brand Eddard start there. Ed Horde. Um, okay, join me. Join me, Ed Horde. Get, get on that. I almost want to take Santa off the center. Um, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I, I want to take him off the center just because it's incredibly risky. Of course, I, I can see our lot right now. We're going to get cut down in the first battle, and that'll be the end of things. But fingers crossed. What's he got there? Uh, is that forest? Yeah. Um, it's only a 10%. And 10% does not numbers make up in this scenario. Do it. Do it. Do it. Fine. The bird cries out and I wake up. I... I'm not going to pretend that I am best pleased about that. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Okay? I'm not going to make a... A fucking... Oh. Okay, Santa's gotten married again. Everything's fine. I'm getting the weirdest, weirdest sense of deja vu right now. Haha, <laughs> but luckily he has magic Santa powers and can undo bullshit events. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I meant uh, time. He can undo time. Okay, so we're in a we're in an okay position. We know that this guy's probably going to attack us then immediately, which is reasonable. Uh, and then we'll die instantly. So now we're stuck in, in Santa's own personal hell of a groundhog day. What do I go for? Valerian Steel, that's it. That'd be so fun to go. I, I just love the idea of taking a Valerian Steel sword back to Tamriel with us. Just that real crossover. Um, okay, so let's start working on some troops then. Because we know that this guy is going to... Uh, I mean, any second now. There we go. Right on cue. Ah. Santa's magic psychic powers have kicked in again. This is good. All right. Um, right, so we need a better commander, don't we? And this time I'm taking Santa off the Vanguard. I, I I, thought to myself, I even said it out loud, let's not put Santa on the Vanguard. We're going to die fucking immediately. What happens? Right on cue, we're dead. I don't like events like that. I feel feel like it's... um. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not just not a good design choice, is it? That's not what players... Uh, let's be honest here. If that were to happen to you playing at home, you'd just reload, wouldn't you? So I, I, I'm always of the opinion of what the fuck's the point even added like fail states like that if the player is just not going to even put up with it in the first place. We can invite some guy, commander of more Zumba. We can invite him to our court. Skilled fighter, giant and strong. Sounds like Hal Zumba. Let's get him on board. Wow. Um, I didn't even think to check elsewhere for commanders. Man, some of these guys are so good. Bring him on board. Walder as well, also very good. 21. So our, our commanders are going to have minimum 21, between 21 and 23 marshal there. Bring them, bring them on. Okay, there we go. Um, right, so we do need to raise our troops, and we know we also need to hire some mercenaries as well. Just to, just to get them to turn around. We could try and be a big old scummy boy this time. Um, we could wait for them to move at lock and then hire the, the, the mercenaries. Which I guess I've now committed to, bearing in mind that he is movement locked. Boom. 4,025. They are at half morale, but of course they will... I mean, how long is it going to take them to get here? 16th to 12th moon. They've got 12 days to, to gain some morale. Uh, we're getting 0 0.7... Oh, shit. Well, sorry, we're getting 7% per week. That's not very much, is it? Um, <laughs> that's like 15... Not even that. That's like 13, 12, something like that morale. Okay, that's not ideal. But hey, I'm, I'm relying on our commanders here. He's also taking a straight crossing, and we also have mountains. So that alone might be enough to make the difference here. All right. Uh, now I also want to quickly, excuse me, Moors, welcome, Moors Umber, my good ally against the traitorous Karstarks, and then we also want to, what do you want? <gasps> Commander? Uh, I mean, I appreciate the offer, Eddard, but no, no, I'm never leading troops again, actually. Funnily enough, I've remembered that it's, uh, <laughs> complete bullshit. Okay, right, there we go, and let's get, uh, let's get Moors on the center, my good man, Walder, and Doru. Nope. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit, still a little bit tilted by that first battle there. It's, uh, all right, here we go. Watch this, ready? They're going to cross over. They're going to get, oh, roasted. Absolutely fucking roasted. Right, so you guys are going to give me a load of money now. 84. Didn't pay for the mercenaries, but hey, that's going to shut them up. We've proven Santa's superiority. In fact, can we turn it around on him? Play our, play our reverse card here. Declare war? Nothing. Oh, that's a shame. Um, yeah, no valid cast spell. So we could start replicating claims uh, or on, on some of these uh, realms up in Westeros. So we can even go beyond the wall. I think that's thinking way too laterally. I think I think that's uh, far too straightforward. More importantly, it's right in the line of Morai zombies. And like I said, Santa's had enough of those to last him a lifetime. So we're going to head over to Essos almost immediately here. We need to get a real move on with these uh, with these claims. So, Lorath would probably be the safest one to try and rip apart. The only problem then is, of course, we'd have to contend with Norvos, who are quite militarized, quite powerful. Um, I say that because Lorath obviously has its capital completely separate from the mainland here. So, what we've got to do is take that, and basically, they wouldn't be able to take it back. It, it Just strategically, it feels like the best option to me. Okay. Um, we've got 1,760 men. Maybe then, for the time being, we will have to rip apart some titles in sort of northern Westeros. Sort of assimilated from the inside. So I'm thinking, let's start fabricating claims. These guys, you know what, you've marked yourself now, my friend. Rickard, you've made an enemy for life in the form of Santa. You've been a naughty boy this year. We're going to try and take car hold. Uh, <laughs> what do you call it, Mo? A car hold. 28% uh, <laughs> chance yearly. That's fine. That'll do. I want to keep Eddard on side. You know, I, I still want to maintain his... Do we want to maintain his friendship? I mean, our High Lord is already friends with us. So that's that we've got going for us, because he might obviously ask us to stand down to stop our war of aggression against his, technically his kinsman there, uh, House Karstark. But I think we should be okay. I don't think we have to worry about it too much. Bear in mind, he's our friend and doesn't have much of an opinion of uh, Rickard Karstark there either. Because that helps 1 plus 5. That's a nice little, uh, that's a nice little attention to detail. Very cool. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about it too much. He, he would definitely back us against him in that war of aggression. Might, unless he obviously protests him to get him to stand down. He might just agree to that because he's honorable Ned Stark. We could start, you know, we could start getting in there good with Robert as well. Just in case Nedard dies. Nedard? Just in case Nedard dies and he needs a uh, replacement for Lord Paramount in the North. Say how Stark somehow get wiped out. I say that as if it's not common for how Stark to get wiped out. Um, start swaying Robert Baratheon. I feel like Sansa and Robert Baratheon would get along. Two big, big, big heifer, thick boy, beardy men. Let's do it. Here's something we can take back with us to uh, to Tamriel when the time comes. The Citadel would offer us a very, very unique set of abilities. So, uh, you know, quick access to things like Strategist is obviously quite high tier there. But the, the learning and the other bonuses that we can gain from it, forging that big link, that's something we can continuously do. But anyway, Santa also has the benefit of being immortal. So we could we could be one of the most... We could, we could be getting on the intelligence, the, the field experience, the knowledge from the Citadel, and applying that to... Uh, to trying to expand out in... Because I feel like expansion in Tamriel is going to be a lot harder than expansion in Westeros. Mainly because, you know, as, as, a, as a vassal here, we can just swallow up our other fellow vassal lands. But we are an independent, uh, very isolated realm. So we, uh, uh, outside of a, uh, an invasion in, in Tamriel, I can't really see that our plans are going to go very far. So we need to buff Santa up. I, th I think for the time being, let's use Westeros as a focus for making Santa the strongest he can be in the form of artifacts like the Valyrian Steel Sword in form of an education. So through the Citadel there, try and buff up his stats, get in some good artifacts there. And then in, in Tamriel, that's where we want to try and get the gold from the raids. And that's where we want to invest into our realm a lot more. That is, of course, their first step stopping Stopbug. Anyway, we do need to defeat the Dwemer and obviously get some sort of weapon to use against them as if everybody doesn't know what the weapon is going to be. Um... All right, I'm fine with that. Keep fabricating claims on car hold. It shouldn't take too long. Was that like 25% chance yearly and our diplomat was kind of shitty? Um, yeah, I think we get a better justicia than that. It's 28% chance yearly. That's very good already. Um, let's see if we can get someone just slightly better though. Join court, yes. He'll do. Look at that legendary diplomat there. Welcome. Yeah, absolutely. 20, 20 diplomacy is a... Damn, it's a damn sight from our current justicia. That might be like... I'm going to take a modest bet at like 45% chance yearly. That'll do. Perhaps it could help me to increase King Rob's opinion of me if I sent him a gift of, sh of friendship. Now nah, we can't really afford it right now. What I do want to do is try and fabricate claim the whole of Carhold. Take the whole thing in one, on one fell swoop rather than risking... Rather than potentially risking, you know, taking the province in him. Obviously having to show claims on that and trying to take it back straight away. We are definitely the underdog, underdog here. Ah! To the raffish dragonborn Santa. Peace be with you. I accept your gracious invitation and will join your court forthwith. Thank you, Sir Andron. Okay, let's stick him on the council then very quickly and send him over to Carhold. What are we looking at? 
38%. You know what? I was a little overzealous. To be fair, he doesn't like us very much. Let's send him a gift as well. Um, oh, shit. If I raise him to an ability, it'll sack him from the council and put him back on. We'll actually lose a penny, won't we? So I'm just not going to bother with that. All right. I trust you. Let's let him. Let's let the man work while we try and... Oh, my God. Ned Stark wants us to be Rob Stark's guardian. Ho, ho, ho. Welcome to my court, Rob Stark. We're going to train you into a... Fine. Oh, I revoked it straight away. That's okay. I'm not offended. In the Game of Thrones, but of course, there's a lot of restrictions on your personal domain. You're kind of expected only to hold a couple of titles at most. Um, but to make up for it, of course, you do have things like military command. So you're, it's essentially um, vice royalties from the base game. Now, we've got to kind of decide what type we want to hang on to here. So let's take a look at... Uh, I mean, all of our promises are going to be crap, by the way, for ages and potentially forever. Because we're not exactly in the most uh, strategic place, are we? So we've got Driftwood Hall, small shipyard, and a small Skugossi keep. We've got Deep Down, just small Skugossi keep, and then King's House is large. Okay, so I guess we'll dish out Deep Down to someone. Um, let's employ a new courtier. See if we, uh, let's see if we can just give it to someone loyal. I guess if we land this guy on our council, I would just dish her. That guarantees that he'll stick around. He's also a really good character to have around. So fuck it. Take, take Deep Down, my man. And then he stays part of the council, and he likes us quite a lot. Let's send him back over to Carhold. That might give us a slight bonus there. It is still 38.7%. Ah, now to take Sansa as our ward. Right, okay. Um, Sure, is he just going to immediately revoke it again, though? No? Okay, Lady Sansa is now in our court being educated. Sansa and Sansa. Oh, my God. Dear friend, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I would like to give you a seat on my council and therefore offer you the title of Justicia. Thank you, Eddard Stark. Of course, we'll accept. Sansa will be the official representative of... For uh, for for the North in Westeros, what the hell have we done? This is this has gone already wacky as all fuck. Um, I don't know who she is. We didn't kill her. Princess Thomas. Oh, I mean, the only character we've got a special interest is Robert Baratheon. So, game, you kind of you kind of giving him away there. Uh, should we ask King Robert Baratheon up to Skagos to spend some time with Santa? Of course, of course. Oh my God. <laughs> Robert was happy to oblige me. Now I can finally have some time to spend with him. I'm confident that I can convince him of how alike we are. I can see the resemblance. You know, give it give it 20 years on Robert Baratheon. They'll look basically identical. We can finally talk in private. Uh, we don't really care about trials by combat, do we? It is surprising how often King Robert and I found ourselves debating theology during the visit. Ah, right, because of course he's uh, Faith of the Seven. I hope these debates help us understand. So we get 15 opinion, 10 opinion, or 10 opinion there for diligent as well. Hey, nice. We are swaying Robert Baratheon as well. I feel like we've, we've really, you know, turned up and started to forge some serious long-term alliances here. It'd be really cool to rally the Iron Throne, wouldn't it, in a war against, uh, in a war against Spothbog there as well. Ooh, very quick. Oh, man, it's only 25 gold as well. Right, because our monthly income is so garbage. Um, yeah, Lordship of Carhold is done. So we do want to fabricate climb on the whole duchy, like I said. So it's just Eastmel and Weeping Bay. So let's move you over there. This is cool. This is going to be a really nice quick expansion. Plus, you know, Skargoss is crap. We might actually want to make Carhold a capital. And to be honest, Common Northman ca Castle is obviously a lot better. And we've got two cities and a godswood there as well. So this would bring us a lot closer to just the the, the, the the rest of the realm. We'll hang on to Skagos, though. I'm not planning on giving that away. Maybe we can make this guy a vassal. Um, we wouldn't be able to give him the duchy level title, obviously, but we could just give him uh, we could just give him the rest of it, and then he'll have to petition us or whatever. We're probably going to have fire sword added to his treasury. I really don't care about his various stuff, but I do want to win him over. Dear friend, I wish to give you the honor of sending my child, Lady Arya. Okay, fine. We'll take Arya Stark along as our ward as well. Arya and Sansa. Oh, no, just are you now. He keeps revoking and giving us random kids to look after. This is so weird. No way. Oh, my God. That was so fast. So, uh, I mean, we've seen this event a couple of times before in, in series. I'm not going to spoil it for those of you who've never seen this before. Oh, my God. But the chance of dying from this event is massive. We've lost so many characters in the past this event as well. My Justicia came to me today a bit annoyed and tired. My Lord, there is an old man in the courtyard claiming he has to speak with you. He claims he has something you pay a great sum of money for. The old man seems to be a lunatic, but... Well, he claimed he had a map. An old map of Valyria, where great treasures are hidden. Let's hear what he has to say. And there he is, the dusty old man. That could be Santa. Before you stands a haggard old man in his 50s, maybe 60s. He doesn't look Westeros, so nor does he look like a beggar. Okay, he has... He has a map, basically. I'm just going to sum it all up. He has a map to a Valyrian st steel we weapon. You have my curiosity, but now you have my full attention, or we can kick him out. Of course, this is this is our goal. I would love to take back that sword back to Tamriel. I think that'd be incredible. The old man tells you he's certain about the location of the Valerian steel you seek. He points to it on a map and appears convinced. No doubt the journey will be long, arduous, and very dangerous. And absolutely it is. This could absolutely result in Santa dropping down dead. But if we end up with Valerian steel armor, that would be fantastic. 
But it can give the weapon or armor. It's just sort of nondescript Valyrian steel, in inverted commas. I am ready and prepared to undertake this task. Another hundred dollar dues. Yikes, this is expensive. The Fellowship of House Claws. I love it. While preparing for the journey, your priest suggests you should take someone along for the journey. We can take a great warrior, a sailor and a navigator, a comely healer, or the old man himself. So... I mean, obviously, it's, it's kind of down to us here. The warrior will help us fight any dangers we might come across. The setter and navigators will help us get there. And the coming healer will help keep us alive if anything does go wrong. We'll take the old man. Um, normally, I tend to take the old man, I'll be honest. Because it, it's just a nicer story that way, isn't it? But it might make a lot more sense taking a sailor, a navigator, or a great warrior. I mean, any of these seem like a much better choice. You know what? We're taking the old man. He's never done me wrong. He has. He absolutely has in the past. And there he is. Umbra, the Asossi Valyrian short fella. We're going to mark him a special interest. Um, oh, my God. Shit. I completely forgot about this as well. It's a very expensive event. That's the one thing they also sort of uh, don't mention. Should we hire a sturdy cargo ship? We could build a large warship. I think we actually keep that permanently as well. We actually get a ship that we, we can name and it gives marsh bonuses, etc. Um, I'll hire a sturdy cargo ship. Mainly because to pay off 400 gold would take us many, many years. 200 gold is still going to take us a while, but we could potentially debase the mints a couple of times. I don't want to rely on that for our full 400 gold, though. Hire a sturdy cargo ship. Now, while we're away, we can also get ourselves a secondary trait, too. So we can learn some foreign languages. Gives us uh, diplomacy plus two, learn plus one. What's our weakest stat right now? Uh, Santa's not the best steward. So cartographer... Oh, man, that gives movement speed, of course. Like I said, like I said yesterday, in the realm of... Uh, in the realm of movement lock, this is this is king. Let's go for it. The ship is docked, fully loaded, and crewed, ready to depart on our quest. Umbra is alongside you. Oh my god, he's called Umbra. What do you mean it's a Latin word? Shut up, it's so appropriate for this series we've got going on right now. Wait, is that the name of the sword, Umbra? I'm not going crazy, right? That is the... Okay. Uh, you give the command to cast off. You make a joke about naval life. Ho <laughs> ho! Seaman. Oh, not now. Uh, I'm going to take it. Obviously, I'm going to take it because that is, uh, that is that is kind of rare. Okay, so what do we want to go for next? I'm Weeping Bay, if you don't mind. While we're away, I don't think we can have a kid, but we could potentially debase the mints because I think that just targets the character rather than... Um, actually, I'm not sure in hindsight. I don't think we can flip over if we're away from court anyway, can we? Uh, and we've got a two-year cooldown on it, so that's probably a bit more prohibitive. After many weeks sailing the seas, you were growing bored. I thought I said you were growing a beard. Perhaps something can be done with Umbra to pass the time. We could play Kavas, which is basically chess, or read a book. Um, if we read a book, he's happy with that. All right, fair enough. Uh, why the fuck not? I, I guess we might have... Oh, everything is so appropriate, isn't it? It's all just... It's all just coming together. This is nothing of my fuckery as well. This is just the developers all being on point right now. I have a selection of books stowed on the ship to read. We can read The Lusty Tyrosian Maid and gain 10% uh, fertility. Naval signals and etiquette. Valyrian for dummies. Or we can review Skagos' accounts and gain a stewardship. Um... I think I want the fertility at this stage, particularly when we got stressed as well, giving us the minus 10% fertility, so that will help cancel that out somewhat. Is that a permanent modifier? Uh, I guess it is. Wow, that's very cool. Oh, no. The lookout atop the ship's mast has spotted another vessel out on the horizon. As it comes closer, you realize it must be pirates. Attempt to fight them. I mean, look at Santa. He thinks, do you think pirates stand a fucking chance? Attempt to fight them using your cargo ship. 33% uh, chance we succeed. 33% chance Umbra will be maimed. Santa will be maimed. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, but we succeed. 33% chance we die. Wow, so that's a real... I don't think I like that. Attempt to board them and slay the crew. So I imagine that'll be based on our personal combat. We got minus 51 right now, so that's not very cash money. Sail away and escape. 75% chance we fail, though. I think we've got to go for it. My god, this is so dangerous. We could just straight up die right now. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. That is the end of the series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Your ship fired its cannons at the pirate ship. The pirate ship fired its cannons at you. Then you fired your cannons at the pirate ship, but it fired its cannons back at you. This went on for a while, but then the pirate ship was sunk. Proceed onwards, but we paid a hefty price. Santa has been made into a pirate by the pirates. We are now one-eyed and one-handed. Uh, my good man, Umbra, or as he is now called, Malakwo. He changed his name on the journey because he thought it suited him a bit better. You know, he's trying to keep uh, a little bit of uh, um, in incog incognitoness. What's the word for that? But actually in the right order. Anyway, proceed onwards. Now I have to deal with this. We are one-handed. That is not good. That is not going to help out our personal combat. Storms are common this time of year, so it wasn't entirely unexpected to be caught amidst one, but this was different. It arose suddenly and took your ship with vengeance. Uh, it's top bog. It's fucking top bog. The vessel groaned in protest. It was violently rocked back and forth by the waves. Crew members being flung like rag dolls by the fury of the sea. A loud crack rips through the wail of the storm. You yell, generic sailing instructions. <laughs> Sail away. <laughs> 
That's what, it's what Santa sounds like when he gives sailing instructions, by the way. Oh my god, we actually survived it. You awaken with a start coughing violently, face down in the sand with the surf lapping at your legs. You get to your knees and take stock of the area around you. No one else seems to be there, and then you realize with growing panic, are you the sole survivor? Wait, the, there's a body washing up on the shore. It's Umbra, but he's unconscious. Uh, we can kick him, or we can give him a big kiss. Mwah. There we go. We, we, we kept him alive. You storm through the jungle with Malako trailing behind, struggling to keep up. You must continue about the cruelty of the old gods in ruining your adventure. Okay. Uh, oh my god, I've not seen this one before. Your fucking music. My god, this is not appropriate right now. We're fighting for our lives, damn it. You glance back at the s and see a large snake wrapping itself around your his legs. He lies prone on the ground. He's going to be eaten by a snake. Shot at by pirates. Almost drowned and now eaten by a snake. We could laugh mockingly. Uh, I guess we'll find a large stick and take swings at the snake. It's available due to your high learning skill. What? The snake bad? Is that our fucking learning skill that's in, in partners that glorious knowledge? Okay, fine. Snake very bad. You manage to free Malako from the jaws of the snake and you carry him to a nearby cave. You notice once inside, the cave walls are dark and square. Seems like a man-made corridor. I will continue onwards. The riddle. Oh, Christ. <laughs> a mural on the corridor depicts near a tree by a river, there's a hole in the ground. One crow and four proud eagles fly around and around. A lone direwolf appears in the veil of the night, while all eagles were killed by a dog in a terrible fight. Below each section of the mural, the following text appears. I got time to kill, so I looked in corridors without a plan of yours. A blackbird sings on a bluebird. Oh my god, and then the event cuts off. Let's hope that wasn't fucking relevant then, huh? It seems important. I'll take a look at it closely before proceeding. Perfect. I've memor I've committed it to memory because I'm a genius. Okay. Um, oh no. Oh my Again, the developers are on point here, but this is um Wow, okay. Uh this this seems familiar. I recognize this from my homeland of Atmora. A stone door closes behind you. In front of you there is a lever with three rotating pillars. Each pillar has four pictures that look surprisingly similar to the mirror you encountered in the corridor. Oh god. Okay. Um <laughs> let me just let me just uh let me just go ahead and confer with my memory to make sure this is okay. Let's talk this one through. One crow and four proud eagles fly around and around. A lone direwolf pits. We've got a crow, we've got eagles, we've got direwolf. All the eagles were killed by a dog. So the, the eagles are gone, the dog appears. Then what? Um, okay, so... Oh, right, right, so it's gonna be, uh... It's gonna be crow, direwolf, dog, yeah? So, pillar one is crow. Pillar two, we want eagle. I think it was already set to eagle, wasn't it? No, 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 eagles are dead. We want wolf, uh, direwolf specifically. And then pillar three, we want doggo. Um, this, this is, this is awfully confusing. Alright, so, let me just double check. Uh, one crow and four eagles fly around and around. The crows are dead, so, uh, sorry, the eagle's dead, so fuck them. So it's crow, direwolf, doggo. Uh, crow, direwolf, doggo, we're good. Hit the lever. The lever resets, and, oh, come on. Uh, oh, no, we're fine. The, the lever resets, and you hear a faint clicking of cogs that get louder and louder. The rune shakes, and the blood begins to trickle from your eyes, nose, and ears. Your body is telling you you're in pain, but you're actually fine. Don't worry about the blood loss. It's not like we've been shot by a fucking pirate. Oh my god, that's the end? There's an elaborate looking vault with a giant chest surrounded by piles of gold. You move towards it as you can see a blade made of Valyrian steel. Malako grabs you by the arm and he says, Wait, I need to talk to you. We can take the sword and try and kill him. Or we can listen to him. But potentially he might get the drop on us. Alright, fine. I will listen to him. While together on the boat, I remember our game of Kavas. We didn't actually do that. We of course read a book on uh, on on diddling Argonians or Tyrosha, whatever the hell it was. You read during the trip, knowledge is power. He thinks fondly of you on this. When pirates attacked, I remember you risked our lives fighting a pirate ship with a median ship. He dislikes you because of this. When we arrived on the island, I remember that you were very concerned with my life on the island. <gasps> thank you, for fuck's sake, thank you. Oh my god. Marco falls to his knees and swears an oath of the fealty, vowing to serve you in your house from this day to his last day. Lord Santa and Malaco become close friends. Thank God we had that Dwemer magic that let me reset time. You walk over to the treasure chest and take out the sword. Your journey has been a success. Adds Valyrian steel sword to the treasury of Sansa. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it the... Uh, is there a pun on Valyrian that works for Sansa? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I, I'll, you know what? Comment section. Hit me with some names. Hit me with some Valyrian steel. This is going to be big. So of course, this is going to be a, a persistent weapon that sticks with the Santa Claus dynasty throughout the rest of time. My God, this was. Uh, but right now, we're just going to call it Santa's, uh, Santa's, Santa's pole. Uh, you know, like the, the the North Pole, obviously. Obtain Valyrian steel sword is finished.
That ah, uh, yep. Euron Greyjoy is the fucking Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. What? <laughs> um, that's really cool, but not what I expected. I'll be honest with you. Well. Thank you all for watching. This has been a draining episode for me personally. And for Santa, who has lost his hand again. A second, two series in a row. We've got that to take back with us, of course, to Atmora. But we do have, along with that, a Valyrian steel weapon, which we will definitely be taking back with us as well. Tomorrow, Santa will fly back to Atmora so that we can continue the good work over on the other side. This has been has been treacherous. It's been long, but we, we have ourselves uh, at least something to show from our journeys in Westeros. Thank you to the insane top tier level patrons for making this uh, insane series possible in the first place. A big thank you goes out to Alchemia, Anthony Gawley, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Baking Hit, and Balek Strongbow, Ben Hoffman, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Fukuna Vasquez, Gogolas, Harry McGowan, Iguana Squad, James Shea, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nordstrom, Necrofenon, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Scott, Skaz, Slippy Nips, Somnus, Shea, The One Ring, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McClan, Vacuous Backers, Varagon, William Green, and Paul as well, who became a new patron as i was recording this episode so that was very good timing thank you all very much for your support at the insane tier levels on patreon thank you for making the channel possible in the first place thank you for making youtube possible in the first place and a thank you as well of course goes out equally as much to the other patrons who have enabled the channel including uwu daddy asro adam person adrian Elison, andrew walsh andrew wilson anchor attila vetimus max better valerian blood for the blood god boingon chris corgi circa stapper go don don 2217 emerald beam foosh gabriel van Ders, gaz genji zirka gothamo gray haji dumar i am sagatair irotha icy the great jackson p jay lara jacob wolfie jason sushu jose jibus crust yoran de Vries, jessica smith jobs lucky sister jilly vondel joseph beer justin plock justin rules justin walters Kevin Saunders, Lieutenant Dan, Lepus and Lepus, Luan and Thomas, Luke Wallace, Manuel Bosic, Mustolp, Monty, Mosey Sampson, My Name Isn't Dio, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sam Keir, Scaps, Shardul, Smirtworm, Soikrates, Supernani089, Sweetsy, Tony Laban, Volta, Voodoo Member, Void Prince Kiba, Will Wade, Wilson, Tef, Wolfie, Yellow Four, Yorker, Zach, and Zetlock 2. See you guys all tomorrow for another episode of just this complete madness. My god, somehow these episodes are more draining than the time I had that fucking beard on. Unreal.